I'm David Lamb of Metalware SPA, a joint stock company located in Italy that is responsible for the communication activities of the Caspar project. Caspar is a digital preservation project that is co-financed by the European Union within its sixth framework programme. So, how can digital data still be used and understood in the future when systems, software and everyday knowledge continues to change? This is the Caspar Challenge. Caspar intends to offer a methodological and technological solution to digital preservation within the ICT market. Caspar is a unique operating system which allows it to interoperate with as many systems as possible. It can be implemented using any kind of emerging technology and is applicable to multiple domains, including both public and private organisations. Let's have a look at what the Caspar project has to offer. ESA is the European Space Agency. The member states of ESA are 18 countries, including Czech Republic that was joining ESA at the end of 2008. All other countries are historical countries who have space uh, capabilities. And in the near future, we plan to see ESA being the space agency of Europe. The space agencies manages a lot of Earth observation satellites and this is in ESA one of the key program. Actually at the moment is the largest funded ESA program. Large-scale programs at the international, European, national and regional level are key in this moment to make sure that we understand our environment and the major issues that uh, the environment has like global change, sea level rise, disaster management, and so on. The uh, data from the European Space Agency Earth Observation Program are large. Uh, at present, the archive of ESA includes some things between three to five petabytes, many, many different files, many different uh, organization of the data in different places in Europe, and in the plan from the next 10, 15 years, there will be 10 times more data uh, to be managed by the facilities that ESA operates. To make sure that we understand what was happening in the last years, it is important to have at hand all those data from historical archives and be capable to use them in, a, in the way scientists and in, in institutions will need to make sure to, to understand uh, the policies and uh, the operation to be associated with environmental issues. And that is the reason why we need long-term data preservation. The challenge for the future is uh, to guarantee to the scientific and uh, operational user community the possibility to access and uh, use forever the big amount of Earth observation data. So um, ESA is uh, active in developing appropriate techniques and strategies, also by promoting and participating to projects related to long-term data preservation as uh, CASPAR. ESA participation to the CASPAR project is driven by the interest in confirming and consolidating the validity of the OAIS reference model for long-term preservation issues. This model has been already adopted in several internal initiatives, the multi-mission facility infrastructure, which is our archiving infrastructure, and the SAFE format, which is our archiving format, are already OIS compliant. And uh, uh, our interest in participating in this project uh, is uh, uh, also driven by the interest in developing uh, preservation techniques uh, covering not only the data but also the knowledge associated to uh, them. We have to guarantee the possibility for different user communities uh, to understand the meaning of the data and then to, to use them.
in Caspar is a plays the role of both a user and infrastructure provider for the scientific data testbed using new proposed standards and specialized infrastructures. The ISA selected dataset for the scientific testbed consists of data from GOME, that means a Global Ozone Monitoring Experiment, a sensor on board the ISA ERS2 satellite. The GOME dataset is uh, just a demonstration case because similar issues concern many other Earth observation uh, instrument datasets. To understand the work we are doing for the ESA testbed, first of all, we need to understand how the GOME dataset uh, is composed. Uh, the different products uh, we can extract uh, from uh, GOME data uh, are based on different processing phases that are applied to the original uh, data that was sent uh, from the satellite to the ground. It's a raw data and we call it level zero data. Going through different processes, we can uh, generate new products that are called level one or level two, uh, obtaining different information from the original raw data. So when we are thinking about the preservation of the GOME dataset, we are not only thinking about the preservation of a sequence of images, but we have to think about uh, a complete collection of data images, of images of uh, GOME, together with all the processors that are needed to process the data, all the manuals that are used also to understand how to process it, and all the data viewers that are needed to exploit the data in a second moment. The test that we are building so needs to deal with the preservation of these really complex sets of data. Uh, during the ingestion phase, we need to extract all the descriptive and the representation information that are needed to link the data and allow every kind of user in every moment in the future to, extract, to request and extract the data and process it in order to have all the information he needs. This means that we need to preserve processors, software, libraries from all those kind of changes that happen every day into the IT world which is the production of new operative system, new libraries or new programming languages of even simply a license that is expiring. The core of our testbed is based on the uh, to preserve the ability to process data from, from level 1b which is raw data plus calibration parameters to level 1c which is a fully calibrated data. If something happens, if a license expires or uh, we need to make some change to the processor, uh, we need to tune Caspar and its components in order to be able to let the, the information, the new information flow into the system, to let the system administrator go into the Caspar system uh, to download, recompile and upload again uh, the new processor. And we also need to set up an alert system that is going to link the new processor to the user and uh, to, uh, um, to alert all the other components that a critical change into the system has been done. initiatives are working on standards for digital preservation, but Caspar goes that one step further, as not only does it intend to preserve the data, but also the necessary knowledge that we require to interpret the data. We could say that Caspar is as important to digital data as the Rosetta Stone was for the interpretation of the Egyptian language. Thanks for listening. <laughs>